Hi, my name is Alex Munoz, and this is a short tutorial on how you can tether your Rico Pentax 645Z to Capture One. The solution works on both Windows and Mac and works with any version of Capture One right now. What you need to get started is, of course, a 645Z with the latest firmware 1.20 or newer installed. You're also going to need a little tool that's called Capture Fix that I'm going to provide you down here in the comment section. And of course, you need the image transmitter software too, which I've just fired up right here. Before we can get started, there's a few things that we need to take care of. So the most important thing is, of course, we have to have the camera connected via a USB 3 cable. And we need to set up our destination folders. So I'm going to create two folders here. The first one I'm going to call uh, in to keep it simple. And the second folder I'm going to create, just going to call out. Now that I have created these two folders, I have to set up the image transmitter to software to actually store files in one of those folders. So I'm going to click the destination and I'm going to store incoming files on the in folder. So what I'm going to do now, after setting this up, I'm going to turn on my camera which should come up here right now. There it is. And I can see all my settings and I'm not going to go into all the details how these settings are working because this is for another video. Um, all I'm going to do here is I'm not going to save any images to the card. So I'm going to leave those boxes unticked. And what I'm going to do is I want to transfer raw files instead of JPEG files. So I'm going to have to go all the way down here and I'm going to deselect the JPEG and select the raw so that the only files that are being transferred are raw files. There you go. And I can actually minimize that window now. And I can uh, start the little tool called Capture Fix. Capture Fix works the same way both on Windows and Mac, and it's actually very simple. As you can see here, you have an input directory and you have an output directory. So the input directory is the one that we just created on the desktop, and it's called in. So let me just select that real quick. Uh, it's on my desktop, and there's my in folder. It's important that you don't double click on the in folder because you can't select it. You actually have to go one level up, mark it, and then select choose and it's right there. Then you have another option, it's called delete source. What that does is once the file has been processed, so Capture One recognizes it, it can be deleted automatically. So if you're short on um, local storage or something like that, then you can obviously do that. Or when you actually batch process images, which I'm gonna show you later, then you can basically just copy images off an SD card and remove them automatically on the card after they have been processed. So let's select the uh, output folder. The output folder that I just selected is of course the one that we've created earlier and now I can also tick this box minimize window while running which allows me to minimize capture fix while it's running. Pretty self-explanatory actually. So let's get started with uh, capture one. Well, those of you who have worked with Capture One extensively, they know a feature is called the hot folder, which we're going to use right now, which is the output folder on the desktop that we've created. And by right clicking on it, we can set this as a capture folder and we can see this little camera icon that indicates that this is now our capture folder. So what Capture One does now is as long as hot folder is enabled, it will look for all the uh, images that come in on the hot folder and automatically display them. So let's do that. Let's take an image with the camera and see what's going to happen. Of course, you can apply presets, recipes, styles while these images are being imported automatically in order to cater to your preference. And in addition to that, you might want to apply some changes automatically because Capture One does not natively recognize the 645Z images and color balance, uh, white balance, things like that might be off. So as you can see here, the image is right now here, and uh, this is what uh, Capture One things, and I had a custom set before. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a few adjustments to make this look a little bit more closer to where I actually want it to be. And as you can see, if your image comes in with a uh, weird tint or something like that, then you know this. these are the sliders that you need to adjust, and then you can create a, 
a recipe for this so that you don't have to do this every single time images are going to come in. So I think this is pretty much to where I want this to be. And uh, let's take another image to see how that's going to look like. And there it is. And Capture One does exactly the same thing. It applies like some settings. And what I'm going to do is now, of course, I'm shooting against a bright window light. So it's going to be a little bit blown out. And I'm going to make my adjustments like before. I have the colors right and everything. And then I'm going to um, get rid of uh, the highlights a little bit so that the image looks a little bit more balanced and I don't have it blown out. But there you go. I mean, you guys already know how the workflow works in Capture One anyway. So this is nothing new. There's another thing that I want to show you, though. Um, Capture Fix is able, as I mentioned earlier, to actually batch process images. So what this does is it allows you to, let's say, import images from an SD card. And while you're importing them, they're being modified so that you can import them into Capture One, which saves you an additional step. So let's say you were on location, you shot some images, and you don't want to go through them one by one. You can just do that while you import and automatically make the changes to the file so that the images are being recognized. So in order to do that, I want to show you real quick how this is going to work. I've exited the uh, image transmitter software and I'm going to have my capture fix running here. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to open a network folder where I have a couple of images that have not been processed before and capture fix isn't running right now. That's very important. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy some of these images into my input folder. Because these images are located on my network, it's rather slow to copy them. So I'm going to speed up the video a teeny tiny bit so we won't have to wait as long. So the files are coming in right now. And once they're here on my desktop, all I have to do now is actually click the start button on Capture Fix. And I want you guys to pay attention to this a little bit. So this is real time. There's no trickery or anything going on. So as soon as I hit that start button, please watch the output folder where the converted files are going to show up. And this is real time, as I said before. It's rather quick. So ultimately, Capture Fix is able to process about five to eight image files a second. So there's not going to be any noticeable delay coming from Capture Fix when you're tethering this to Capture One through the image transmitter software. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.